COVID-19 Testing Progress Report As you know, we are currently living through a pandemic. Coronavirus disease 2019, also known as COVID-19, has brought our lives to a halt. Over these past few months, millions of people across the world have lost their jobs, income, housing, food security, and most importantly, their loved ones. As of November 1st, 2020, COVID-19 has spread across 215 countries, infected over 45.9 million people, and claimed the lives of at least 1.19 million people. To date, Canada has had over 235,000 confirmed cases and 10,000 deaths. Ontario has had at least 75,000 cases and 3,000 deaths. In fact, Ontario hit a first-time record with coronavirus cases on October 25th since the pandemic started with over 1,000 new infections confirmed and reported in one day. Cases continue to rise in Canada as we are experiencing a second wave. While COVID-19 testing has become more available across the country, information about what kinds of tests are available, how testing works, and other features of COVID-19 testing is not widely known. Through this video, we hope to shed light on these crucial aspects of the disease. Let's look at some basic facts about COVID-19 first. COVID-19 is caused by a virus called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. This virus, like other viruses, only has single-stranded RNA as its genetic material. We will revisit the importance of this later. COVID-19 is mainly spread through respiratory droplets when an infected individual sneezes, coughs, talks, or exhales. When these droplets reach the mucous membranes of another individual, this person gets infected. You can also get infected with the coronavirus if you touch an infected surface and then touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Some people with COVID-19 may be asymptomatic, meaning they never exhibit symptoms. Others, however, can show common symptoms like fever, fatigue, and dry cough. It is important to note that people with COVID-19 can experience the disease in different ways, so they may also experience aches, sore throat, loss of taste or smell. Severe symptoms include shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, chest pain, and loss of speech or movement. On average, infected people can show symptoms anywhere between 3 and 6 days, but can also take up to 14 days to show. Now let's take a brief look at some testing milestones in Canada and Ontario. Since COVID-19 started to spread around the world in early 2020, we have heard how important testing is, not just for those who may be infected, but also for understanding where and how the virus is spreading. This is important to plan effective public health responses and flatten the curve. On January 10th, researchers in China sequenced the genetic code of COVID-19 and released it publicly. On January 12th, Public Health Ontario developed the tools to test for the virus and performed the first test for COVID-19 in Ontario, which came back negative. On January 27th, Public Health Ontario confirmed the first case of COVID-19 in Ontario with the help of the National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg. In Ontario, testing methods and capacity have ramped up quickly since the first case of COVID-19 was detected in January. Through late January and early February, as the virus started to emerge in Ontario, mainly from returning travelers, Public Health Ontario increased its testing capacity. They reduced the time taken to test samples for COVID-19, while also increasing the number of tests that were performed each day. Now we'll talk about what types of tests are available regarding COVID-19, their advantages and disadvantages. Firstly, we'll talk about the diagnostic test. A healthcare worker will insert a long, flexible swab into your nostrils to collect a sample from your sinuses. The swab will reach deep into an area called the nasopharynx. The swab will be rotated in your nasopharynx area for several seconds to ensure that the sample will have enough material, possibly including viral particles, for the testing procedure. The sample is then immediately placed into a sterile tube that contains viral transport medium to help preserve the sample a little while longer and protect it from degrading. Next, the sample is analyzed on-site or shipped off to a lab to be processed. The lab technician will use a method called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, to detect COVID-19. Now how does this work? PCR is used to amplify a specific DNA sequence to make billions of copies of the sequence. Now, remember when we mentioned earlier that COVID-19 is a virus? Its genetic material is only RNA. First, the lab technician will isolate and purify the RNA from the sample obtained. Since PCR only amplifies DNA sequences, the single-stranded RNA of the virus is converted into double-stranded RNA by an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Now, the newly synthesized DNA is added to a PCR machine along with DNA fragments called primers and fluorescent dye. The primers are designed to bind to characteristic parts of the virus DNA in your sample DNA. The dye molecules bind to the virus DNA as it is being copied. Binding makes them give off more light, which is used to confirm whether the person who gave the sample has coronavirus or not. 
In the machine, the mixture of sample DNA and primers are repeatedly heated and cooled over many cycles to produce billions of copies of sample DNA. This helps the machine to detect any instances of genomic sequences in your DNA that match the coronavirus DNA. The fluorescence increases as more copies of the virus DNA, if present, are produced. In real time, the machine measures the fluorescence or light given off by the mixtures with each heating and cooling cycle. If the fluorescence passes a certain threshold, the result is positive. If the threshold is not passed, the test results show up negative. Now I'll discuss some pros and cons of the PCR test. The advantage of this test is that it is specific and sensitive. It can determine if you have COVID-19 with up to 97% accuracy and can detect even as small as one viral particle in the sample obtained from the nasal swab. In addition, this test helps diagnose those who are asymptomatic and infected and can therefore help these people receive the care they need earlier and isolate earlier to prevent the spread of the disease. However, like with all procedures, PCR diagnostic testing has its disadvantages. Firstly, this type of testing can be time consuming. Running a PCR test on a sample can take anywhere between a few hours to a few days and can take even longer depending on resource availability in regions and countries. Remember that this test only detects whether you are currently infected with COVID-19. So while you wait for your results, you could have been exposed and become infected in that time period. This is why it is recommended that once you take a test, you remain isolated and separate yourself from others in your home. Secondly, getting a negative PCR test result does not simply mean that you are not infected with the coronavirus. A negative test result is not enough to rule out COVID-19, as there may have been problems with testing. For one, if the sample was not stored properly before completing the PCR reaction, this could lead to a false negative result. A false negative can also occur when not enough virus in the sample is obtained from the swab. If the sample only has trace amounts of the virus, it will take many more cycles than usual for the sample to reach threshold and the virus to be detected. So, if the PCR reaction is stopped early, there may not have been enough cycles completed to amplify viral DNA. A false positive can occur as well. This often happens to patients who have recovered but still test positive for the virus even though they are not infectious. Studies show that this happens because the virus coexists in your body and while you may not be infectious, you can shed dead fragments of the virus. The PCR test is so accurate that it can pick up these small dead fragments of the virus leading to a false positive result. Because of this, critical resources like a hospital bed or medications are diverted from those who really need it. As a result, it is dangerous to overly rely on PCR testing results not only for you, but for effectively tracking COVID-19 cases. Now, let's summarize what we've talked about in this video. In this video, we've talked about basic facts about the coronavirus, such as its genetic material, how it is transmitted, and the symptoms of the disease. We delved deeper into how coronavirus is diagnosed through the PCR test, more specifically, how it works, its advantages and disadvantages. To support PCR diagnostic testing, another type of testing is available. This test is known as the serology test, which we will discuss in the second part of the COVID testing progress report series. We will also discuss how PCR testing and serology testing benefits the public and scientists, as well as share important information regarding testing regulations and guidelines. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine channel on YouTube. Like, comment, and share the video if you liked it. That's all for now. Thanks and goodbye.